Good morning everybody, Vaughn here with the Vonster vlog and welcome to another week on the homestead. We have just survived our two nights of frost before some more warm weather and the kitchen's in a bit of a state. Um, we've got the dehydrator going still, we've got plants and stuff inside, we've got cutting started and I can't wait to share all of it with you. So let's get started. That was too good. Hey guys, so I'm hanging out here with my Z dog reading hobby farm animals. <laughs> and I'm on beef cattle right now, um, is what I'm reading about. Because even though I currently have zero capacity to raise my own beef cattle, there's no time like the present to start soaking stuff up with my brain. And, um,. To just learn as absolute much as possible and y'all look at this book it's textbook quality like no I haven't I don't want to be skipping ahead but just going in depth into the feed and stuff beautiful pictures look at that cow poop goes the snoots doop doop um y'all I'm a giant child <laughs> like I don't know why I'm like this, but also I love looking at the pictures of cows. Look at that Highlander. Oh, at least I'd brush that cow all day and probably have an allergy attack. But yeah, so I don't just go through and look through the pictures. I'm actually reading as well. Um, and I feel like I'm definitely out of my wheelhouse, but it's... A lot, it's a lot of the stuff I've seen in like YouTube videos about raising cattle uh, is starting to make slightly more sense. Um, it's just like, oh, that's what they mean when they were talking about this or that or, you know, <sighs> different things. So I'm just going to keep reading this morning. I've got an hour of time slotted out for studying, so I'm going to get to it. So this is how we spend our mornings. Randy's curating his daily memes. Millie's trying to eat hands. <laughs> Mostly just Randy's hands. <laughs> it looks like she didn't have her dentures in again. She's like, don't don't shame me, human. <laughs> Hey guys, so I'm having a break, drinking an afternoon cup of coffee, hanging out in my pompous on chair, up in the living room, and I am trapped by this pretty kitty. I've spent basically all day trying to get, trying to vacuum, honestly, and I was like, before I can vacuum, I need to tidy this room up. So the glorifo- like, so like, so I dusted the entertainment system, moved Spyro up here, did the couch covers randy's been doing laundry for me all day got the forge room tidied up got like 40 pounds of rice 10 pounds of beans and 20 pounds of flour and cornmeal uh like vac canned <laughs> into storage it just ugh. i just want to vacuum my damn house <laughs> like oh my god i'm so tired and the, it's the afternoon and I still haven't vacuumed, which was the one thing on my list to do today. So I've done everything else but what was on the list. And guys, so I'm sitting here petting my Ember Kitty, who's such a good girl. Let me see if she'll let me pet her. Let me see if I can do without spilling my coffee on it. Oh, what a good kitty. Yeah. But I was just looking over there. And that's right where my Randy and my Maddie go. So I'm kind of lonely. I'm going to sit here petting my kitty. Missing my friends and family. But that's alright. Randy's downstairs and Maddie's off at school. 
nine hours away, but that's fine. <laughs> Hey guys, so it has been a busy day, if ever there has been one, but there was so much. All I wanted to do was the vacuum the house. We already talked about this. So I'm making beans and what I've got going on here is I need to, I was like, I should vlog this. Um, let me turn the heat off on those beans so I don't burn them. This is two cups worth of beans that I cooked, I boiled, they're still quite hard. Um, I really should have soaked them overnight, but like, yeah, that, whoo! Well, I just, <laughs> I just squeezed the bean. There's bean everywhere. Um, they're not done yet. So I'm going to put in this can of stock and simmer them for like three hours. <laughs> but I, the directions on the bag said to bring it up to a rapid boil for two minutes and then to turn off the heat and let it sit for an hour and then drain and rinse. I've done that. And so now from here, I'm just going to be simmering it. And then I will keep you guys up to date with the rest of what we're doing because I wanted to make a nice bean soup and some air fried chicken legs. And then tomorrow we may have the rest of this soup and I was going to make like a corn pudding maybe. I don't know. We'll see. a bit um but that's all right <laughs> and please pardon as usual we've got laundry going uh so i'm doing a tablespoon of minced garlic and i put one of the packs of carrots dehydrated carrots that we had made back in march and let's do two tablespoons of minced onion and then i'm just gonna stir this in it's getting real thick, so I'm gonna have to add some liquid. And um, I just wanna keep it right at about, just basically full, as full as the pot will hold. Um, but this should make a real nice creamy soup. Some celery would be nice, but I've used up all my celery. So I'm definitely going to have to increase whenever I find a good sale on celery and it seems in season, though I've yet to you know, determine when that is. Um, I'll definitely have to get some, or I just grow some and grind it up my own self. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Actually, I remember now. So if I'm remembering correctly, whenever we had dehydrated the celery, I'd been using it just for making the chicken stuff to get that flavor in there, but its texture was never quite right again. If I ever save up the money for a freeze dryer or find space in my kitchen to put it, um, freeze dried celery, I think I would try that and see if it works any better. I wanted to share this beautiful sunset this evening with you guys. Just the way that it's catching the clouds. It's so subtle. Like just a just a gentle gentle sunset. But also if we come down this way. I love the way that it brings a second second life to the leaves as they change because we've got a very dry fall this year. So all the oranges are very dry <laughs> looking. But this tree over here is still just one of my favorites. <laughs> like, I mean, I know it's not picturesque, but to me it is. Even with all the power lines in the way and my dead morning glories. <laughs> that frost worked a number on us, but it's still beautiful out here. With zooming puppies. <laughs> hey guys, the soup came out so good. I ended up putting maybe a third of it into my little blender. I had to do it in batches because I was like, I don't feel like putting together the immersion blender. 
I should have just put together the immersion blender, but we got it. It's good. We're having it and some chicken legs. Oh, there you can, there you can see the chicken legs. But here, you know, let me turn the camera around. Like a professional person, I'm searching. I'm like, this is really good, but it's basically bean and carrot creamy soup with chicken. Um, and I'm like, this would be really good with clams in it or chicken or like just and then I was like chowder so we might have to figure out a beanie chowder or something hey past uh, bond hey future bond I'm gonna mute you real quick hey everybody thank you so much for coming and hanging out in today's premiere I'm gonna get back to hanging out with y'all so alrighty guys so this is how it started we did that experimental melt right and that's how it looks on the side like that reminds me so much of the banding of Botswana agate and uh, we only processed about half of it so far oh, I forgot that little guy but I set them up on their edge kind of like that in the kiln at Randy's opening oh. yeah some of these came out much bigger than I anticipated but we might just keep them as nice, big, unique ones and then chop that one up. They're pretty cool. You like them? Mm hmm Me too. <laughs> oh, it's still quite warm in there. Ooh, that oh, looks so that cool, though. Degrees. Yeah. <laughs> All right, stop <laughs> that. <laughs> but I, I mean, I didn't know how much that this would spread because some of them were stacked, you know, almost an inch tall. And so I tried to give them a lot of space. Mm -hmm. And I think that worked out okay. Which one's your favorite? Oh, it's a toss-up. Because this one was the it's one that I showed one. you that was like a pyramid that got the top chopped off. Yeah. And I don't much care for the... Ouch. Uh, in the center, that one looks really cool. It's a, a four for me. There's yeah. that one, that one, this one, uh -huh. and this one. Yeah? Yeah. Right out. I think this one's one of my favorites. In that one, <laughs> I so do you really. Like all the ones that don't. Well, I mean, I just I'm a huge fan of the cells mm. in them, and like how this one, I'm that bubble got captured. Digging the stripes, right? Because I mean, that is. Do that. Yeah. Is this guy a heart? Almost. A little bit. Oh, that'd have been really cute if we had topped them with like a millefori or something. Maybe. We'll have to experiment gotta... with that. Yeah. Well, it's as we process it down. Yeah. Um, the bubbles, the bubbles will come out. I personally That's love cool the look. way that it looks because it gives it like uh, storms on Jupiter. Oh, sure. Like that effect. This is cool. I like this. Good morning, guys. Um, I'm just having some coffee. It is Saturday. It's a super busy day today. Um, just by no one's fault but my own, really. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff. I'm going to be finishing up my like kind of morning ritual. I'm like hanging out in here, drinking coffee, which I really desperately need like a little shelf like right here so I can stop holding my coffee cup like this. I live on the edge. Uh, planning my day, just did a little bit of meal prep um, before, like while the coffee was brewing, I got five like Lunchables made, which are about 450 calories each. Um, but I just planning out my day because I'm still going to try to lose 20 more pounds before the end of the year. I'm going to see if I can because that's kind of the rate that we had been going at. But that's neither here nor there. We have a lot to do in the kitchen and in the garden. I've got some old leftovers that need taken to the chicken. I tried making like a corn pudding recipe, which was pretty nice the first night. I'm not going to lie. Reheated, not that great. It's the kind of dish that needs eight up in one sitting so now I know that for next time I am going to half the recipe and I'll take you guys along that journey with me and I'm gonna see if I can't make like little like if I can't freeze half of it unbaked and see what happens I don't know have any of y'all made corn pudding it's basically cornbread with shredded cheese and creamy corn and kernel corn in it but it's good I like it first day it's good oh no ton of butter <laughs> but um i'm gonna go do some yoga and let's let's go ahead let's not talk about it let's go do it really what are you doing baby yeah <laughs> oh it's a big stretch and my sweet little z dogs over here just laying 
working in the sun. Okay guys, TMI moment. Um, as I've been losing weight, I'm down 30 pounds and I have like 100 pounds to go. Eh, 80 to 100, we'll see. We'll see how things progress. Um, but I have been using some of my own mixed body oil uh, that I wanted to share the recipe with you guys today because as I get loose skin in particular spots, it gets tangled. A little bit like it pinches a little bit more easily like especially this bit of skin like I'll be like doing something and just a little bit of skin will fold over and like get pinched and it hurts and I'm like if I could keep my skin as tight as possible uh, in conjunction with wearing compression and you know we're doing drinking a two to three of these a day which hydrate um <laughs> And, you know, just, just doing what I can. I also take a hair, skin, and nails vitamin for whatever that might be worth. Like, I am trying everything. But I know that the biggest thing to do to get any sort of measurable result is going to be consistency. Um, so, considering I am all out, it makes it hard to be consistent. So, let's go ahead and get to blending. So, seeing as I just make this for myself, I'm going to be eyeballing the measurements. But and I think next time I might go with... Uh, unrefined grapeseed oil as opposed to apricot just because it has a little bit of a strong smell um it's not bad it's just a little stronger than what i would have liked and let's see is it no here we go there's my funnel here is my evening primrose oil there's a little bit of tamanu oil which this is I think this is what lent the really strong smell, but man, my skin responds really, really well to it. I'm not going to be putting any iodine in this one. Ooh, argan oil. Let's go ahead and rummage, rummage, rummage. Okay, that should do me. Let's find some flavor. We've got our rose absolute. And we have, ooh, just about, I'll use that last little bit of blending oil. And then rose, lemon, and let's do, where's my jasmine at? Frankincense. Ooh, that really smells really good. E, F, G, H, I, J, too soon, H, J, jasmine. There we are. <laughs> I really need to label the top of these. So I don't have a scale up here. So again, just eyeballing it. Take that and just set it like this there we go and i am going to go ahead and take off my watch just because as i get oil on my hands i just rub it around <laughs> so um we are going to do this looks like a two cup maybe cup and a half i don't know container so let's see if we can very carefully some all over my desk too oh that's quite a bit that's all right and the moisturizing begins <laughs> if I can get the cat back on but yeah this has a really nice kind of like fruity smell and it's from the apricot kernel so that's not a bad smell at all it's just a little a little less floral than what I would like okay so I'm gonna do so let's say that's two-thirds of the bottle so I'm gonna do a little bit of jojoba 
And if you can hear my dog chewing on her rawhide in the background, well, there's some ASMR for you because I've been hearing that all morning. But she's such a good doggy. I can't just take her toy away just because the sound is disgusting. Um, <laughs> so the vitamin E oil. Next time I'm actually going to have to measure this out. This stuff is really nice and thick. Dummy thick, some might say. It might be a little dust on the bottle. Don't let it fool you. It's like I spilled some, so I'm just <laughs> moisturizing my elbows. A wise bond would probably go ahead and edit this out, but man, this stuff feels good on my skin. And I did go ahead, whenever I had initially gotten these oils, I had gone ahead and tested each of them uh, on me to make sure that, because even though I've used, you know, vitamin E in the past, I've used evening primrose, primrose oil in the past, I've I'd never used these brands. Um, the bottles were new to me. So... I, I know that they're okay for me. So if you're doing your own, be sure to do... I don't know if I want to eat it or if it's gross. So I'm just going to do a bit of that Tamanu oil. It's really, really potent stuff. But you can see it's got a really nice, like, kind of dark green color. Putting it on my elbows. Because that's where my biggest psoriasis flare up. Is, is on my elbows and then like my left knee is doing a lot better like it somehow spread like the patch is bigger but it's also doing better so I don't know what to expect from that um here we go some evening primrose oil And then just a touch of argan oil. That's a really nice light oil, the argan oil is. Love it for on my hair and on my face. Though I'll take everything on my hands. <laughs> These hands have seen some stuff between the garden and everything. It's just oof. Okay, so now, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm filled up to about where the shoulder starts curving in on the bottle. I should have grabbed a napkin or something, but here we are. Uh, so I'm going to do... I'm going to go ahead and count the drops in. One, two... Let's just do 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Oh, that smells so nice. Okay, now for the rose absolute, we're just going to do 15. And now I'm just going to go ahead and dump in the last little bit of this Lang Lang oil. Which this is from, I mean, 15, almost 20 years ago. I don't know if there's even enough to make a drop come out. Well, so I'm out of this stuff. I'll have to see about getting more. My favorite place to order from is Mountain Rose Herbs. But, um, there's a lot of different places online nowadays. Amazon's actually pretty good. I've been pretty pleased with, especially with the prices of, um, some of their oils, even the stuff that's certified organic is real affordable over there. So I am just bottling it up, just giving it a swirl. Can't really tell too much with the coloring inside of it, but it does get a nice 
bit of swirl going on some bubbles in there and then this should last me for about another month so what I do with this stuff is I use it nightly on my face decolletage like elbows arms like I use a light layer of it all over in the mornings so that I'm not being greasy all day I usually just put on some lotion um, I like the way it smells, I like the way it feels, it's very cooling on my skin, but the biggest thing that I've been doing is whenever I shower, um, after I've, you know, I come up here, I'm drying off, I slather head to toe generously in this stuff, like, like a whole solid pump, which is almost like a tablespoon of oil, <laughs> um, and I'll just all over, and I will feel so, like, greasy and, like, like, if I hugged a dog, I would be covered in dog hair and grease. Um, so what I do is I have a very old towel that I use for my hair um, that's very rough. And it's got, like, holes and stuff in it, but that's not important. The important part is that it's rough. And I go through and I just buff that oil <laughs> into my skin. So it's a, a kind of almost oil bath exfoliation after my shower to get all you know good and clean and stuff but I just kind of buff that oil in and uh, like around on the back I, I'd show you guys but uh I don't want to stunt your growth or anything or scar you for life but uh, I'll like all over my legs like head to toe now I don't saturate my hair in it after I shower um but I do put some in my hair after it's been blown dry but um like I'll put a towel under my leg and like pull it up on one side or the other and just like kind of almost like polishing a shoe shine um down because you gotta treat every if your body is a temple you gotta clean every corner and every nook and cranny and sweep the whole floor do all the <laughs> all the body maintenance chores but it's helping so much you guys and after I've done that towel buff um I my skin just doesn't feel oily anymore it feels very moisturized but I can go about and function throughout my day um, and I do have a tendency to shower in the evenings uh, so I'll do that and then just put on like my night clothes grease my feet up with some like foot butter um, put on some big fluffy socks and then sit on the couch and vegetate until I go to bed <laughs> so I just like ah, relax even if it's just for a couple of minutes but just fitting in that little bit of self-care uh, I, I think at least makes me feel like first off it feels really good because my skin is so sensitive like I've just been sitting here and that little bit of sun coming in through the window I don't know if you can see how red and flushed I am but like my skin's very sensitive to the sun um oh and whenever I put it on in the evenings I also add just directly into my hand vitamin C serum which does make me sunburn so that's why I put it on only in the evenings um, and then retinol and hyaluronol and all, all, nope, glitched, okay, this stuff, hyal, nope, hyaluronolonic, no, hyaluronol, it's this, it's this stuff, um, I'll put that in there and then mm, all over it as well, like, I love getting good and greasy, I know that it's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's my cup of tea, and I'm not using you up, so I just wanted to share uh, what I've been doing and I like the way it smells I like the way it feels um, and so it's a little bit of a reward for you know just why not why not do something that feels nice and it's good for you so now that I'm all good and greasy let's I'm gonna clean up my spot and then let's get on with the rest of our day so I am recording some tutorials today. We're getting the kiln loaded. It's the most beautiful weather, you guys. Like we've got the door open. We had to put up a baby gate so Millie would stick, stop sticking her head through the hole in the screen. I really need to rescreen that door too. So not today though, but um, I am getting today's premiere. Um, we're having one and I, I decided to have it at like noon 30 without telling anybody. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, just chugging right along. Guys, Randy's so nice. He's carrying this big old pan of slop that I've got put together for the chickens. It's leftover corn pudding and some beef stew that it has not gone bad. Gosh, it's so pretty out here, guys. Look. Ow. But the beef stew hasn't gone bad. Well, if we just missed it, there was like some little dirt, like leaf devils and from the wind. We're going to have to get all these 
row covers folded up, but anyways, you can see it's qu quite sloshy, but it's soup that hasn't gone bad. It's just, we're tired of eating it right now, and we could just turn it into eggs for our happy little hens over here. So what I'm gonna do to soak up all that good broth is, I'll show you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a big old scoop of their feed and I'm going to have it soak up this beef stock. And so that's their evening meal. Now you're just being greedy. Ooh, nutmeg got into that <laughs> that corn uh, pudding. Poor ginger. So I think I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to leave this pan out here with the chickens. Well, it looks like Randy's putting together something. Um, I'm going to go help him with that and we're going to get these um, row covers taken down because they, they protect from bugs well, but the wind's beating them up pretty bad and they don't really do a whole lot for the cold and it's like 80 degrees right now anyways. so. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome into the kitchen. I am bottling up some sugar because this is, what is this, a 20 pound bag of sugar, I think, possibly. The whole kitchen's just a mess. Um, but we don't, we're trying to do low carb. Well, I say trying, but we've been doing low carb since June. So it's gotten to where it's been half a year and that's just about half a year and that's not nothing um you know I'm not going to exaggerate let me actually do the math it has been June July August September October five months so close to a half a year but I think we're doing pretty good at it but we still use some sugar for whenever I'm canning uh, or pickling we use it for that. I used the majority of the sugar that I used this year was for hummingbird food. No regrets for that because this was, I think, like a 15 pound bag of sugar. Um, so it's cheap, that's for sure. Um, so, and it's just wonderful to get to see all the hummingbirds and stuff. So I am just putting it into these jars. I'm not going to be doing any heat sealing and I'm not gonna bother with an oxygen absorber because it is literally like pure sugar. Um, it'll be fine. Though, if you have any advice on this, I would love to hear it. So I'm just scooping away. It's been a real busy day, but that's okay. I like busy days. We fit in some time sitting in the hammock. Got to hang out with my chickens. It was a little windy to do much in the garden, so we didn't get the uh, row covers 
taken down because quite frankly we can either wrestle with the wind or wrestle with Millie. I'm not going to wrestle with both. And it was windy and Millie was out and about. So we're going to wait until it's a little less windy to get those row covers put away. I guess I should keep track. I can fit about five to eight pounds. No. I had weighed it once. You know, I've got a scale. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Okay, so I've got a scale here. Let's see if we can get it in frame. And we are on pounds and ounces. So this is five, five pounds, five ounces. But I wonder though, how much of that is a jar? One pound, 10 ounces. So I've zeroed it out. Three pounds and 10 ounces worth of sugar per jar on average. Let's see on this one, three pounds, nine ounces. So around there, almost four pounds. That's all right though. And I'm just gonna keep bottling up till the rest of it is gone and anything that I have left over, um, as far as jars go down here, um, I'm going to be putting filtered water into and then a uh, hot water bath canning it to sterilize the water. Um, though I'm going to have to search it. Do I boil the water first? I don't know. I shall do research. sugar got us seven cans seven half gallon jars uh jarred up and that'll be great like I don't need to buy sugar now for like three years this isn't our only stock I have some more over on the other shelf but uh well hey little lily dog now it's time to can up some water so let's do some research and get to it Good morning, you guys. It is a beautiful day, and I am making some like pepperoni and mozzarella and cheddar and grape lunchables so that we can mix it up a little bit. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to like get the morning. My butt's dragging. I'm tired. I'm trying to be chipper, but here we are. Let's go back to making lunchables. So I've got my compost bowl over here for some of these grapes are pretty old. Um, anything that has any sort of bruising on it, I just go ahead and put it in there because um, the chickens will just love it. But considering these are gonna be in the fridge all week, I only wanna, you know, only, it only takes one with a little bit of mold and stuff on it to make the whole pile of grapes go weird. And we've got more grapes in the fridge, but I just wanted to go through and I'm doing each of these with three ounces of grapes six pepper thick pepperoni slices and an ounce each of the mozzarella and the cheddar so pretty excited about that A lot of these that fell off the stem in the bag are already just kind of fermenting on the ends. So I think that's that for the green grapes. Let's go grab the purple ones. Oh, and I'm trying a new camera angle today too. So here we are at, ooh, that's a smooshy one. So we grew our own grapes this year. These are not what we grew. We ate them all, um, but it was really good. And it made me want to grow even more of our own grapes. So, um, I just don't know where we could really fit it in um, on this property, but I would like to learn more about that, you know. Oop, forgot to zero my scale out. Still waiting for these green tomatoes over here to uh, 
I don't know if I'm gonna make relish out of them or if I'm just gonna fry them up. I think I wouldn't mind a relish, but we'll have to see. I mean, I've never tried a tomato relish and I'm typically hesitant to make recipes that I haven't tasted before. Especially when it's using, you know, produce that, while I didn't pay for it, I did, I did, you know, water the plants all year and, you know, put in my time and energy and stuff. And so I don't want to make a recipe and then have it turn out just bleh. <laughs> and then I'll feel like I've, you know, wasted that produce. But if I also never try anything new, then what's the point <laughs> of any of this, really? So, uh, yeah, if y'all have any recipes for preserving green tomatoes, because we could make a green tomato salsa. That's something we could probably do. I'd have to store by some peppers and stuff, but we could make it work. So I'm just going to keep putting grapes. I'm loving that breeze today. I don't know if you can hear it picking up on the camera. But it's raining leaves again today. If I go a little point one of an ounce over, I don't mind a bit. And I think we might have just enough grapes, you guys, if none of these have gone, have turned. But yeah, just a little bit of prep with my coffee here in the morning. Sets us up for a successful week. Cause man, it is nice not having to cook a whole meal. It didn't look like much, but this is a very decent lunch. Oh, I'm half an ounce short. Good news, I had more grapes. So we're gonna, there we go, and then two for me. Mm. I think grapes are like my favorite food right now. So I'd gotten two different, there's the brand Easy Lunch Boxes, and then there's the one that doesn't have a brand on it. And so far they seem interchangeable, the lids between them, but honestly I think I would rather go with the brand that's not the Easy Lunch Boxes, um, just because you got twice as many for the same amount of money. So I think moving forward, if I get more of these, I don't really feel like I need more of them right now. But if I get more of them, then uh, I'll pop a grape or two over into the cheese bin so it'll close easier. But uh, yeah, I'll stick to just the off-brand basically next time. Five lunches. So now we have... This is the stack of the salami, cheddar, nut, and grape Lunchables. Those are basically mine. Randy doesn't care for salami. And then these ones are the pepperoni. You know, and I say that the lids are interchangeable. I don't think they actually are. Not perfectly, at least. But it's good enough for me. I'm, I'm not worried about it because these don't travel. They just stay in our fridge. Then we have all those pepperoni ones with the mozzarella that we just made. So pretty pleased with that. Hey, guys. So I'm still finishing up my coffee. But I am working on, let me flip this around to show you. I'm working on the line work for our paint by number. So this is the Luna Moth artwork that I had done. Um, and I'm putting in paint by number lines. So I don't know if you can see those showing up and going away. But let's see if we can so this is what it's looking like so far now I'm removing the color on that and the color on these layers so this is what the paint by number is actually going to be looking like and uh, 
I still haven't figured out yet how I'm going to put the numbers in because like if I zoom in like to be able to put the number you know like look at how pixelated that is so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it as a PDF um, and then put it into like Adobe or something and use that text tool to put in text so I'm really hoping <laughs> really really hoping that that comes out pretty good Millie. Millie and I just had a talk about how we're going to have to go traveling for uh, the holidays. And she's just sitting there with her sad little face and her baggy pants. Oh, little Millie dog. Hey guys, so I am filling up my pressure canner. Uh, not filling it up, but, but just doing a couple of inches of water in the bottom. Ooh. Alright, that's enough of that. Alrighty guys, so we've boiled our water, um, we washed our jars, I'm pressure canning the water actually just because it's going to take about half the amount of time as what it would just to get that whole water bath up to a boil. Um, so I have two gallons, four half gallon jars here and here and I'm getting it up to temperature and then, um, and then we'll do another four and then I'll just have an extra empty gallon jar laying about until next time I either find more jars or have more empty and just refill them with water so hey guys so uh I got one batch of water canned yep still looks like water and but while doing that because it was probably like five hours because I did not stay on top of it um, I let it cool naturally, didn't rush it at all, but while I was doing this, I went ahead and designed, like, uh, it was very passive work in the kitchen, so while the water was pressure canning, um, which Randy was like, are you seriously pressure canning water? And I was like, yes, yes I am. <laughs> but I went ahead and designed my first paint by number based off of a piece of art I had done probably about a year or so ago and I am so excited to try to get it to print I can't figure out how to get this is Randy's old computer that he like shifted over so that I could use it um and I don't know how to make it talk to the printer just yet like I don't know if it's connected so we're getting that figured out but while I get this figured out my sweet Randy is out on the front porch working hard let's check him out if you can kind of see so this was i did a paint by number that i bought on amazon and i was like i love this i want to do this every day for the rest of my life um but that's usually just how i feel there's my wendy working on cleaning molds for me so we can so we can get the kiln reloaded uh, but yeah, that was the bulk of my work for today. I'm also going to try to like get a tutorial or two shot, but that may wait until tomorrow. So we'll see. We're printing to see if it works because we've been fighting with this freaking thing. This was the first. You can see that's no good. The second one didn't hit the moths. Yeah, the second one was just numbers. <laughs> oh, give me that. Yes. What's it look like? Oh, I'm afraid to be excited. Oh my gosh, it's so crispy. You can actually read the numbers. And this is this is the absolute smallest. This is an eight and a half by eleven paper. And there is no way that we would be offering this smaller than this. So everything bigger than this should be good. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, it has been such a busy day. But I've spent it almost entirely on a computer um, getting our first official paint by number Ooh, designed. I really got to do something about We've got like so many hammocks in this yard, but we're finally getting them all figured out. Um, so I'm going to spend the evening, what last little bit of daylight we have left, playing with the dogs out in the yard. And I have some chores to do. I came out and took a break a little earlier and got some of the row covers taken off um, just because they weren't really doing much and uh, the wind was having its way with them. So uh, I'm going to get the row covers taken off over here and then I've got a surprise for y'all.
Let's see if Millie's into it. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I think I had more fun with it than Millie did, but maybe it just hasn't grown on her yet. So I figured out how to get her to play in it. I was dragging it to uh, take it to, I was gonna just dump it in the chicken coop. And she's, of course, as soon as I get the camera out, she's like, no, mom, don't get video of me being adorable or anything. I mean, she's adorable just standing there. <laughs> but I think I'm going to hide some toys and treats and stuff in here and just give her some place to be a puppy. Just a puppy. Did you find a good stick, baby? Yeah, oh yeah, you did. Well, come on in, Z. The leaves are fine. Oh, you're walking through my peas, buddy. What you doing? <laughs> come on. Let's come in. <laughs> well, Millie's just having herself a leaf soak. She's going to chew on some sticks. <laughs> well, I guess Z and I are going to get back to work. But the boss is happy, so... She's always chewing on something. Boop. <laughs> You're a good boy, aren't you, Z? Yeah, I'm a pretty good boy. <laughs> Y'all, this is next level. Ember is doing a blockade. The dogs cannot be fed. The dogs hunger. <laughs> What are we gonna do? I can't usurp her. <laughs> I'm gonna have to usurp the cat, but my, she's so like passive aggressive and angry. Hey guys, it's raining and we have our grow station set up. Let me show you what we got going on here. We have some cuttings, which it all just looks purple right now, but uh, we've got a peace lily, an aloe, some cuttings of that coleus that seems to be doing pretty good. What do we have over here? And I just have strips of LED lights. And then another peperomia, some more coleus, and a spider plant buried in there somewhere. This is These are just plants that I've taken from the porch. Okay, Millie, let's go outside. Let's go outside, little girl. But uh, now that it's kind of too cold on the porch, which, by the way, Check out how good these petunias are doing. They are just flowering away. Love it. It seems to have stopped raining mostly and now everything's just all wet. That's okay, I'll take it. You know, I say that, but then we come around here on the side of the house. It's still drizzling. It's still doing pretty good. I'm gonna put it on wide lens. I want to soak up as much of these beautiful autumn colors as what there is to soak up. <laughs> oh, Millie's having a pee. Good girl, Millie. But our... You can see how this bed's doing. The leaves, though. Oh my gosh, I'm loving the leaves. So we've got our big hammock that we like to lay here in stargaze and then during the day we lay over in that other hammock um, To just like be in the shade though now, you know that there's not so many leaves But this is how the gardens looking you guys. There's not much flowering, but there's a little bit of stuff growing Let's see what's up So here in this bed Underneath some of the leaves, you can see we have some peas poking up and through. 
doing really good. I don't know if any of that mustard spinach um, that I planted, I think any of that that had germinated got nipped by the frost, but now I've got peas growing. So that's pretty good. I think I'm gonna put a couple more of these in here just to help hold the peas up. Our strawberries are looking better than they have all summer, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> so I'd like to put, I'd like to prop this open and put just about all the leaves as I can uh, in on top of the strawberries just to tuck them in for the winter. And then I started trying to clean some of the leaves out of here. You can see one goldfish. I think we still have two have survived so far, but there is just a lot of organic matter in there that needs cleared out. And I don't know if it's better to clear it out or to um, leave it in there so that they have some, I don't know. I don't know which is better. If y'all know, let me know. Or if you have any ideas, let me know. Oh, I still need to clean up that mess. Hey, chickens. You look soggy, girls. What's up? Our time is still doing really well. Here you can see it did fantastically this year, actually. Um, I'm going to see if... Uh, I'm going to try to harvest a bunch of it. And then again, mulching this bed just as heavily as I can. Um, we'd like to order straw before it gets too late into the season, but I was going to wait until it's not raining. Need to cut back all of our Jerusalem artichokes here uh, just to help keep things tidy and apparently we're having a Halloween party on this weekend I, I haven't locked down the dates yet yeah having something for the peas to climb up really does make a difference in how they're climbing all of our radishes over here I need to pull them up and see if the frost affected the fruits like the roots let's see Looks like it'd be a good one, as good as any. Yeah, it's a nice little. You can see it got a little wilted, but I bet it's just as spicy as anything. These guys did not do so great. Um, my other radishes did though. Oh, you can see that one there, just sitting there all nice and red. Millie, what are you doing? What are you doing, kiddo? This bed has our, I think, our rutabagas. Either rutabagas or turnips. I'm not entirely certain. And is there any activity? Oh, there is some activity. It might be radishes too. I don't know. I just work here. <laughs> I really should pay better attention. Uh, and onions. I'm going to see about, again, all of these beds need nice and tucked in. But our kale really did not do well with that frost. The 25 degrees, I think. It got, it really nipped a lot of stuff. Millie just loves radishes. <laughs> what are you doing, Millie dog? What are you doing, Millie dilly dog? She's just so beautiful and perfect in every way. <laughs> this little monster. Look at that cabbage. And all this dill, it did not get phased a bit. Oh, there's that radish again. I'm going to eat that. Okay. Ooh, look at these guys over here. So we have some peas growing. They made it through just fine through the frost. I think I'm going to put another... Let's go get another one of these. I think I'll do this one. It's nice and thin. I don't think it's going to have to take too much weight. But we'll just put it, here let me make the camera big again, we'll just put it through like right here and down there. And so that should hold, that should prop our peas up. And this is the garden from the other end of the yard. I did have those covered, well I'm glad you like tarp water. Um, with the tarp, but the wind blew the tarp off because I didn't clamp it because I got distracted because I was supposed to go find some clamps and then didn't. Um, but here we are. 
It's been a good year in the garden, you guys. Hot. It was very hot all year. So now that everything else in this bed has died back, I can start training my raspberries back up the, uh, the fence and clear out all the morning glories and all that stuff. So, um, ooh, I love that, the creepy Jenny or creeping Charlie, I don't know. Whichever one it is, it's coming in full force. That'll be a nice living mulch through the uh, winter, but I'm gonna cut back, they'll just chop and drop all of the Thai basil because I don't know how much, if any, seeds might be in all of these little flowers. And if I could get the Thai basil to just naturalize itself and start reseeding itself in the garden, that would be phenomenal. I mean, I'm still gonna always start starts with it and stuff, but yeah, we'll come through, clip that back. is this do y'all see this so I'm just wandering around the garden and there's these little are these like eggs like toad eggs or something or frog eggs or is what is happening here do you here let me see another there's another batch But like, what on earth is going on here? I don't want to disturb it, but... That is just crazy. I swear to God, if they wiggle, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to have to keep an eye on this, you guys. Because that looks like something. And it's all over this plant. There's another one on this one. Another couple, actually. It's just on the Thai basil. What is happening? I'm going to touch this one. That is some sort of egg of something, you guys. Oh my god. Yo. This is like freaky deaky exciting. What is this? It's completely new to me. I'm... Ah! I'm going to have to go Google it. So I'm over here, and I wanted to check. And they are on this Thai basil over here as well and it looks like there's one there on that plant so now I'm just looking on everything to see if there's one there oh what is this what is laying eggs all over my garden there looks like there's that one there oh my gosh is there any on the marigolds Nope, just regular old drops of water. What? I'm going to have to come back and check on daily to see how those progress. But this is... Sorry, my hat's all jank. Um, this is super exciting. My hat got all wet and now it's... Anyways. Uh, <laughs> come on, Millie. Stop eating radishes. Let's go inside. Uh, <gasps> I heard, wow, though. Also, it's beautiful. Like over yonder, like that tree is just gorgeous. <sighs> I really like that one there, that's beautiful too. I don't know what kind of tree that is. The low growing one right there is a sassafras, but I don't count on it being there for too long because it's just, um, I don't think the neighbor wants it there. But this one, what a beautiful color. What are you, tree? And I have one of those apps that'll tell you what the tree is, but it's, I don't trust it. <laughs> like it says everything, it's like, oh, that's a chestnut. And I'm like, is it? Is it? <laughs> okay guys, so I am trying to, well, trying, uh, I'm editing the vlog. Hey guys. Uh, <laughs> and I can't figure out what kind of, eggs these are I have no clue and it is so exciting to me so I don't know if I'm just googling the wrong thing or if the depth of my ignorance is beyond what I can comprehend but if any of y'all have any ideas about what it could be um point me in the right direction let me know down in the comments oh here's <laughs> and there she goes she's so fast 
I'm glad the rain laid off just a little bit um, so that she could run around. <laughs> she has been full of energy all day. I played tug of war with her for like 10 minutes solid, non-stop, just constant <laughs> tug of warring. But here's the front garden, but yeah, that beautiful tree. I do miss that old oak. That was bad, that's all right. It is what it is. Okay guys, we are getting it figured out. Randy's getting it figured out how to print um, our paint by numbers like through the rear feed uh, that I didn't know our printer even had. So, uh, and I am getting ready to chunk some glass. And poor little Millie has an upset tummy, but we're chugging right along. Y'all, oh my God. What paper size is this, Randy? Cause that's perfect. A3. A3? Because we can just trim it down. That's looking really good. The numbers are legible ish. Could have made them bigger. Up in here is your smallest, I think. Well, and I was, yeah. I was thinking we'd offer, um, we'd provide zoomed in sections printed on this paper of just the tight detail spots. Like here, zoomed in. Like, I don't know, like, that's why we're going to, but definitely these spots, but that's why we're going to prototype paint it is so we can see where the trouble spots are. Hey guys, we finished up our work in the studio and now we are going out and treating ourselves to lunch at one of our favorite restaurants and y'all, it is a beautiful day. Like, this is in front of us. And then if you can see out behind us, no, because there's there's like all the storm clouds and stuff out that way. But we'll get some more footage as we're driving. Don't mind all the dead bugs and sticks and stuff. That's just that's just how it is. Oh yeah. Put it in. <laughs> oh, I, your hand blocked it. Can you do it again? <laughs> no, yeah. My head's too big for all the hats, which is a shame. Y'all, check out these pumpkins. Uh, excuse me, I'm voting. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't say no vlog. Look at this one. It's a slinky dog. <laughs> We just got out of the Walmart and it totally smells like sewage, but look at how pretty this is. Ooh. Ah. Oh, there's a car backing up into it, but isn't that pretty? Good morning, everybody. Um, it is Wednesday. I'm still waking up, coffee in hand. Cat in lap. Doggy looking out the window. It's a good morning. Um, chores today. We vacuum the house top to bottom uh, and wash all the bedding and like the couch covers because you can see on that couch there these are couch is a generous term these are like the cheapest futons from Walmart we could find but it serves it serves a purpose uh, we cover them with fitted sheets because we fancy um, to keep the dog fur and mostly the slobber for when they chew on their toys uh, yeah, that's why we put the catch covers on them. Uh, so we get all of those washed today. Um, I think I'm going to be redesigning the line art for the paint by number on the Luna Moth. That way, if folks follow just the lines that are on there, I want it to come out looking better. Because I did a test paint. I'll show you guys in a bit. I'm going to get some more of this coffee in me. I am reading my, I've got my little stack here under the bus today it's a tv remote uh i'm gonna be writing a little bit in my burn after writing journal and then reading some more harby harby her hobby farm animals and then i think i'm gonna play the guitar and the piano it's so like i've got like an hour and a half this morning before i get to work so i'm gonna 
just spend that in here doing these things. Mwah. Bye. <laughs> Alrighty guys, we are on the front porch and I am harvesting some calendula seeds. Those look so wicked cool. And so I'm just trying. Here, I'm going to have to change hands. Also, I'm pretty sure that's a praying mantis seed pod. Not seed pod, egg pod. You know, the seeds for the little baby mantises. But I just want to come through and I'm just popping off. Woo! Just like that. And then into my little cottage cheese bucket. But I just want to get all the little seed heads off. Like you can really see them in there. Normally, I'd be doing this two-handed um, and just using some scissors, though I think one of those, we've got these like thumb knives. I'll just use my fingernails. But yeah, I'm going to come through and just keep harvesting all those little seed pods. Whoops. Yeah, I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> Did you click record? Fast okay, well go ahead and click record. It's going. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what I'm doing over here, you guys, this is much easier. Fortunately, with the help of my beloved Randy, we had a little bee stop by and visit us, but we weren't able to get video of it. But I just come on through, and it looks like none of these other guys. Is there a seed on that one? There's a seed. If there's one, then it's enough. So I'm just coming through and I just cut and catch directly into the bucket. So let's go ahead and come down over this way. Thank you, baby. So we've got some stuff. Ugh, these dead ass plants. There we go. 100% good gardening right here. But yeah, so I just hold it. Oh, it jumped right out of the thing. Where'd you go, little seed pod? Oh no. <laughs> And that was like the most well-formed of all the seed pods, too. Okay. So, this is the professional quality y'all have come to expect from us anyhow. So, I just snip right into the bucket. Just like so. And then they can dry at their leisure. Because we it's cool enough at night that we... These scissors, are you seeing how flimsy and horrible they are? Why do I look like this? Oh, look at Bee. Hey, Bee. They're so pretty. I see that wiggle butt. Show me what that booty do. Do, 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 do. Wiggle, wiggle. So we're just going to keep working nice and peaceful. Oh, I love him. Look at you, just drinking all the little things. some scissors that weren't so terrible. I can go ahead and harvest some of these rose hips on into what I need to focus. <laughs> so there. This is just how I do it, you guys. Easy as that. Hey guys, so I just finished up editing the vlog and I wanted to say hey and thank you to all of our channel members. There should be a little boop right here of all of our awesome channel members thank you guys so much for all of your support and just being incredible um it's been a busy week and we're we're off to the start of another busy week um but i can't wait to take you guys on this ride with us and um if you have any questions or requests for future uh, recipes or things that we do here in the This Week on the Homestead. We also, we're going to be having a premiere at probably noon on Saturday um, for a kind of, because our This Week on the Homestead are our long form uh, videos. And then on Saturdays, we'll have like anywhere from 10 to 30 minute long, shorter videos that are about specific topics like how last week we had our um 
why we stopped dry canning and uh you know stuff like that so this week i think it's actually going to be um things that i've been eating for the first 30 pound weight like the first 30 pounds that i've lost on my 100 pound weight loss journey so that's pretty cool um and so we're going to be sharing that and it's just stuff that I know not everybody's into, or not everybody who stops by here is interested in every little thing that I do. So if I break it up into like little, I don't know, we're, we're trying it out. We're seeing how it goes. But uh, I felt really silly this week, um, pressure canning water. Like I even asked Randy, I was like, am I being, am I being weird? Um, and he was like, yes, but <laughs> remember whenever our pipes froze and we couldn't brush our toilets? And we didn't have any drinking water and we didn't have you know so it seems silly and I decided I decided it doesn't matter if it seems silly because I'd rather feel silly or people think that I'm silly and have some drinking water because I'll feel a whole lot less silly whenever our pipes freeze again or something um, and we have it so yep that's that <laughs> and um I gotta get back to work. We are making some super progress on this paint by number. I'm redesigning it almost entirely, but I'm learning so much and I can't wait to do another one. Like everything that I'm learning on this one is making the next paint by number that we do, is making the next paint by number that we do going to be that much better and that much easier on the front end and stuff so is what i'm telling myself so we're gonna keep keep on keeping on so until next time you guys thank you for being here keep being awesome and keep on keeping on Mwah. bye <laughs>